COVID and COVID security. So first of all, it's really good to see uh, so many of you here. We kept the numbers a little bit down from what we might normally do on purpose so that we could be more spacious and we're live streaming and so people can join us online. But it's wonderful after such a hard year that we are able to do an event such as this. And so I'm, I'm very grateful to all of you, not just for coming, but for uh, doing the event right bit. We've done our test and trace, uh, probably for dousing yourself in hand sanitizer as you came in. Just be careful with the flames and the hand sanitizer. Um, could have a very Christmassy sort of explosion. And uh, if you, unless you have an exemption, if you could keep your mask on throughout, unless you're reading, in which case, take it off. Um, so uh, we do remain uh, secure, COVID secure. On your way out at the end, uh, again, we have to look for those crunch points that we don't get too close to each other. So as you come out, do go down both aisles to go out and try, please, just to be mindful of each other as you go through the door together so that there isn't too much of a crush. There will, of course, be uh, collection bowls on the way out. Uh, and also the contactless giving, so you can even avoid that sort of contact with cash. Uh, there are also, we would like to give hospitality in this church, and in normal times, we would force feed you vast quantities of wine at, after a service such as this. Um, sadly, this isn't possible, uh, but we do have some mince pies out there, so if you haven't collected already, please do take that gesture of hospitality from us uh, some mince pies which are absolutely delicious because I felt I had to road test a few of them and uh, we will have that semblance of normality. However, during our service we are also remembering that for many of you this is the beginning of Christmas. It's the beginning of a Christmas which you may have had to change your plans. This is not perhaps what you were expecting to do and there'll be many of you here today who have suffered a lot of disappointment with the change in rules we also know that we're probably in for a tough few weeks ahead and that there might be more restrictions coming. But for tonight, in the context of all that, we're here to celebrate the coming of Christ into the world. And we're going to celebrate with music, which we aren't able to join in by singing because of the restrictions this year. So unusually for a carol service, we, you and I won't be singing the carols and we'll be remain seated but we delegate that to St. Nicholas Singers who will sing on our behalf. So whatever is going on in your lives, I'm delighted that you are here today and that you're able to celebrate with us the coming of Christmas. We'll have a few moments pause before we start.
to give you a more formal welcome today to our service, and also to welcome all those who are joining us by the live stream, which I know involves many members of the Royal Signal Corps Association as well. And I hope that those of you who are watching at home feel as much a part of this service as those of us who are here. And so as we begin and before the bidding prayers, I'd like to lead us in the collect for the Royal Signal Corps. Almighty God, whose messengers go forth in every age, giving light and understanding, grant that we of the Royal Corps of Signals, who speed the word of man to man, may be swift and sure in sending the message of thy truth into all the world. May we serve thee faithfully and with the help of the Holy Spirit make such success of our soldierly duties on this earth that we may be found worthy to receive the crown of life hereafter through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Beloved in Christ, be it this Christmas tide our care and delight to hear again the message of the angels and in heart and mind to go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, and the babe lying in a manger. Therefore, let us read and mark in Holy Scripture the tale of the loving purposes of God, from the first days of our disobedience unto the glorious redemption brought us by this holy child. But first, let us pray for the needs of the whole world, for peace on earth and goodwill among all his people the unity and brotherhood within the church he came to build, and especially in this city of Liverpool. And because this of all things would rejoice his heart, let us remember in his name the poor and helpless, the cold, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and them that mourn, the lonely and the unloved, the aged and the little children all those who know not the Lord Jesus, or who love him not, or who by sin have grieved his heart of love. We pray as well today for those who have suffered this year through the pandemic, for those who mourn, for those who have suffered through the disease, its long-lasting effects, and those who bear the economic consequences today. Lastly, let us remember before God all those who rejoice with us, but upon another shore, and in a greater light, that multitude which no man can number, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in the Lord Jesus we are forever one. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Christ himself hath taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May the Almighty God bless us with his grace. Christ give us the joys of everlasting life. And unto the fellowship of the citizens above, may the King of angels bring us all. Amen. Amen.
A reading from Genesis. God announces in the Garden of Eden that the seed of woman shall bruise the serpent's head. They heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden at the time of the evening breeze, and the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to them, Where are you? He said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked and I hid myself. He said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? The man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit from the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent tricked me, and I ate. The Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you among all animals and among all wild creatures. Upon your belly you shall go, and dust you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your offspring and hers. He will strike your head, and you will strike his heel. Thanks be to God. from the book of Genesis. God promises to faithful Abraham that in his seed shall the nations of the earth be blessed. The angel of the Lord called Abraham a second time from heaven and said, by myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you and I will make your offspring as numerous as the stars of heaven and as the sand that is on the seashore. And your offspring shall possess the gate of their enemies, and by your offspring shall all the nations of the earth gain blessing for themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose and went together to Beersheba. And Abraham lived at Beersheba. Thanks be to God. Let us end the as many boys Jesus Christ. 
Christ's birth and kingdom are foretold by Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onwards and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. Thanks be to God. Micah foretells the glory of little Bethlehem. But you, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labour has brought forth. 
then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel, and he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Thanks be to God. salutes the Blessed Virgin Mary. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great, and you, he will be great to call the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, how can this be since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, 
the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born with the Holy, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren, for nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Thanks be to God. of the birth of Jesus. 
In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. Thanks be to God. The shepherds go to the manger. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Saviour, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace amongst those whom he favours. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Thanks be to God. men are led by the star to Jesus. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, Where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, 
for from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word, so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Thanks be to God.
St. John unfolds the great mystery of the Incarnation. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood, or of the will of the flesh, or of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. Thanks be to God.
us pray. Almighty God, you make us glad with the yearly remembrance of the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that as we joyfully receive him as our Redeemer, we may with sure confidence behold him when he shall come to be our judge, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Well, just before the blessing and we all go out into a dark night to continue or begin whatever our Christmas might look like this year, I'd like to greet again members of the Royal Signal Corps Association. It was with regret that we weren't able to hold their normal annual service at the end of November. There is a date in the diary for next year, so I look forward to seeing you in person in 2021. And for all of you, uh, hopefully uh, we might see you again this Christmas. On Christmas Eve, Midnight Mass is at 11 o'clock. And then on Christmas morning, at, uh, we have our service at 10 o'clock. Um, and then the following Sunday, uh, the 27th, we'll have our service at 10 again to celebrate the Feast of St. John. And we're keeping the Feast of the Epiphany on Sunday the 3rd of January, where as well as the Parish Eucharist at 10 o'clock, we will have Choral Evensong. That will be our first Choral Evensong since March of this year, and we're determined to get it going again. Um, I say all this, of course, in a slightly provisional pro tem way, awaiting any future announcements which may come on restrictions. But for now, we will hold out hope that uh, those services will all take place as planned. But for all of you, in whatever way you're taking part in this service, whatever is planned for you in the days ahead, and for whatever you haven't yet planned for, but is going to happen anyway, I wish you a very happy Christmas and invite you, if you are able, to stand for God's blessing. Christ, who by his incarnation gathered into one things earthly and heavenly, fill you with peace and goodwill and make you partakers of the divine nature and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.